You might have seen a bunch of these routers popping up on Amazon with a super long Wi-Fi range, but if you get one of these new 10-mile Wi-Fi routers, would it actually be possible to use your Wi-Fi from across town? If you run Wi-Fi on 900 megahertz instead of 2.4 gigahertz, it goes a lot further. Except the problem is, that means it goes far enough to be interfered with by many, many more 900 megahertz radios. Wi-Fi radios that are miles away can interfere with it. And it's important to note, 900 megahertz it's not a very wide band. It goes from 902 to 928 megahertz. It's only 26 megahertz wide. So a regular Wi-Fi channel is 20 megahertz wide. So it's only wide enough for one Wi-Fi channel. Everyone there is hitting everyone else. It's not like five gigahertz where there's all these different channels you can pick and you and the neighbors can be on completely different channels. So that 9.9 miles is some sort of theoretical if you were in the middle of nowhere. Now, one trick you can do is you can go to narrower channels. I think that's what they're doing because they're saying a top speed of 32 megabits. So that makes me think they're probably running a five megahertz wide channel. So, you know, they're only using a quarter of the band, 20% Mm -hmm. of the band. So a few other people can use it, but it's going to be a real problem. You're not going to get those ranges in real life. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're in a city, all those cordless phones, baby monitors, anyone else using this 900 megahertz Wi-Fi signal, they're all going to interfere with you and you're going to get very poor range and very poor speeds. So yeah, this is going to be far less magical than they're claiming. Plus, of course, it only works if you have a 900 megahertz Wi-Fi card to pick it up. Oh, so it's not going to work on normal Wi-Fi. No, you need the special 900 megahertz Wi-Fi card. Now, the thing is that I used to buy 900 megahertz Wi-Fi cards from Ubiquiti back in 2005. These things have been on sale for decades. Long before Ubiquiti made routers and stuff, they made just Wi-Fi cards. And they had this magical one that went 900 megahertz, and they sold so many of them to drone makers and first responders and people who need to go far. But by now, these things exist, and they're being used, and they're interfering with each other. So how do they get Wi-Fi on 900 megahertz? It is shockingly easy. It turns out there's this little analog part, standard cheap part, called a mixer that lets you mix together two analog signals. And when you mix together two analog signals, you get two analog signals out. One which is the frequency of those two channels added up, and one of which is the higher frequency minus the lower frequency. So if you take a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi chip and just mix it with a 1.5 gigahertz clock signal, what you'll get out is 900 megahertz Wi-Fi and 3.9 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Then you just put in a bandpass filter that only lets 900 megahertz through, and you just turned a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi chip into a 900 megahertz Wi-Fi. And that actually is the whole thing. So is this router just a normal router with a mixer in it? Yeah, I assume. You know, and if you set the power levels right and stuff, it'll get through FCC testing. You know, there's a 900 megahertz ISM band with just about the same rules as 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah, so it's a simple thing. In fact, not only did Ubiquity do it back then, but if you go to like Ubiquity's website or you go to Amazon, look for 900 megahertz Wi-Fi. They're generally sold as point-to-point systems. Most people will sell you a pair of these because Mm. it won't work the regular Wi-Fi card. So they give you a pair of them. Right. You're not going to be able to pick it up on your phone. No, absolutely not. But you know, you get this point-to-point thing that turns it into Ethernet or into regular Wi-Fi on the other side. So your phone joins that Wi-Fi and it shoots 900 megahertz to the other one. So what would happen if everybody had routers with this 900 megahertz range? That's the problem, right? You, You think long range is good. So it'll work really far away. But because there's only so much bandwidth, other people will have to pick the same channel as you, which means they'll interfere with you. And so the farther your radio goes, the more your radio has the ability to be interfered with by other radios that are farther and farther away. So the nice thing about 5 gigahertz, people complained at the beginning, well, 5 gigahertz doesn't go very far, but it can't be interfered with by radios unless they're very close by as well. So, you know, it's a network for your house and in your house, not interfered with by the neighbors in general, because their radios don't go far enough to mess with you. And once you go to 900 megahertz, things miles away can mess with you. So not that great a solution, unless you know you're in the middle of nowhere or doing the point-to-point thing. If you can get antennas that shoot a really tight beam and you put it on a tower and the other on a tower, and so there's nothing else 900 megahertz in that beam, you can do a lot better. But Wi-Fi shooting off in all directions, that means it's listening for noise in all directions too. And that's not going to work very well. Yeah. You don't want to be at the store trying to connect to your home Wi-Fi fighting with a thousand other home Wi-Fis. That's exactly right. If your radio goes that far, so does everybody else's, right? So I'm much more excited about coming the other way, right? Now they're adding this giant six gigahertz band. 
gigahertz. Mm -hmm. It's even shorter range than five gigahertz, but that means even less people can interfere with you. And there's so much bandwidth that everybody can have a different channel. You could go really far before someone else is on the same channel, right? 900 megahertz, it's only got enough room for like two channels before you bomb people. That's the other right. thing is, is there's, it not only goes further, there's less choices of channels. So, so a higher chance of interference, higher chance of interference on both sides. So is this like a LoRa network? So LoRa is a more interesting technology on the 900 megahertz to me. It's really long range on that same 900 megahertz ISM band, but it's really low bandwidth. It's just for internet of things. You're not browsing the web. It's sending text size messages. So, you know, and then the you can wait a second if the band is busy to get mm -hmm. your text through. I mean, I, I know of a, a lab here in Philadelphia using it two, three times a day, check in on the refrigerators, check their temperatures and make sure it's still cool. And that seems like a great application. From far away, they, they can measure it. I know it's being used on a lot of power meters. So their trucks can kind of roll down the street and just measure how much electricity has everybody used in the last week or the last month. They only a lot of bandwidth. Right? They're pulling, you know, a name, an address. And one number. So that is much more reasonable because it's a small, long-range band. So you send very little messages. Check in. What's the temperature outside? So you connect an outside thermometer, ask it what it's getting. But you're not streaming video on that, which is what people expect from Wi-Fi. So what's a better way to extend my Wi-Fi range? Repeaters. Let's use the 5 gigahertz band and soon the 6 gigahertz band to reach further with the Wi-Fi to repeaters that can repeat your signal. Even better is if you can get an Ethernet cable to where you want, put another you know, Wi-Fi node there. I'm much more a fan, yeah, of these sh higher frequency, shorter range, faster networks. Put them on different floors. I've got one on the first floor of my house, one on the second floor of my house. And, you know, I've got complete coverage and it's fantastic. Now, of course, with all these repeaters, it means you're changing Wi-Fi networks, which can take a second or five every time you go from floor to floor. It can mm -hmm. happen, which is where Speedify is nice. It'll give you consistency. Your apps won't see your IP address changed. You can use cellular on your phone for just a couple seconds while you're switching from the first floor to the second floor Wi-Fi and you know, not hang up calls or have your music stop. So it's pretty nice to put those two together. A lot more Wi-Fi repeaters and then Speedify to smooth over all those transitions and just give you rock solid internet. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe for more connectivity discussions like this one.